We're here with Vince, yeah. mocap supervisor for Just Cause Studios. He's going to tell us all about the brain of the, uh, the whole studio, the capture bay, right? Or, yep. Capture control. Okay. So basically what we got up here is uh, we have capture control. Now from here we capture all the motion that's going on down in the capture volume. Uh, up here we are receiving all the data inputs from all the cameras which see only two-dimensional views. Uh, the two-dimensional views are then triangulated into three-dimensional dots in space. Uh, those three-dimensional dots are then labeled, uh, fit with a skeleton in real time, and that real-time skeletal data, which we call kinematic data, is then sent over to our real-time engine that drives our 3D characters in real time. Uh, as you can see over here, we have the whole process going on. So we have, from start to finish, we have the three-dimensional dots coming in, being labeled and kinematic fit with the skeleton. And that skeleton is then piped over to Motion Builder, where we drive our three-dimensional character with dots and skeleton. We have a similar situation with when we do real-time camera, where we actually track the camera movement and uh, translate that into a 3D camera that is then can do is helpful in the previs and blocking out of shots. Gives it a little bit more realistic feel to the shot. Cool stuff. So that's pretty much how like the data acquisition happens. But how much would a camera like that be you know, worth? On the street. Uh, let's just say on the street, probably nothing in this world. Uh, it's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's head down there and check it out. So we're down in the capture volume to talk about the virtual cam, the pretty much what makes the whole you know experience possible with Resident Evil 5 and the cutscenes. Uh, Vince is going to tell us a little bit more about it. Right on. So what we have here is uh, the newest generation in 3D virtual camera technology. Uh, there's only four of these in existence right now. Cameron, Spielberg, and I think Zemeckis all have them, and we got the fourth one. Uh, so what this is, is it's basically a custom display with custom molded uh, flight aviator grips, and these sensors right here were actually designed for F-16 pilots. Uh, with this control, we have everything we need uh, for directing a shot and laying out a shot. You're basically digital DP here. Uh, on here we have a what's called InterSense. It's a sonic emitting uh, node that is actually captures motion in translational values and rotational values. So we take uh, the movement of this camera, pipe it into a 3D package, any 3D package, and then attach a virtual, a 3D virtual camera to it and then that, cam that 3D camera is moving around in the 3D scene, well then we take whatever that camera sees and pipe it back into this image right here. So we actually have a uh, 3D virtual camera that a director can go in there and lay down any shot he wants. And with the controls, if you wanted a crane shot, you just hit a button and you're instantly 50 feet in the air and then you can start laying down your crane shot. If you uh, needed like a dolly move, you can actually go down and physically move this and record a track of it moving and then go back to frame one and stand there while your camera is moving in three-dimensional space and do all the rotation and the camera shake and make it actually look like a real handheld camera. So in other words, it adds another you know, step of realism to the effect. Basically, it allows to have like that human touch where usually exactly. it's just a computer. Exactly. Brain. Instead of having like a, uh, a static cam that's completely locked off in the 3D world, or trying to hand animate and keyframe the camera movement. This actually gives you the real feel of a, holding a real camera. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. So that's pretty much the state of things with motion capture. We saw everything from the virtual camera to the processing that makes the games you love and enjoy a reality. For all the latest, go to gear.igm.com.